my name is Abhimanyu Sukdiao. Uh, I'm 12. Uh, I created the uh, Three Days to ELC book, and I live in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I'm Anya, and I'm 14. So, Abby, how did you get introduced to Stone Soup as a magazine? Well, uh, I was just searching. Like, I wanted to publish a couple things. Uh, so when I was like nine or so, and I didn't really know, but I came across this website. So I just came across Stone Soup accidentally. And I, I really liked it because it was my age level. And so I started to publish a couple of book reviews there and stuff like that. And I started to get really addicted to it. So I just came across it like accidentally, but I, I really, really like it. Cool. Yeah. And how long have you subscribed to it then? I don't know. I think like, well, like two or three years, maybe. Okay, cool. And then so you have been published in Stone Soup once or twice, and you are a very prolific um, book reviewer on the website, and you also won the book contest last year. So congratulations. Um, so being published in the magazine, what did you have published? Do you recall? Well, I mean, I don't really publish in the magazine that much. I usually publish on the blog, mostly book reviews. Uh, uh, I have published a little bit in the magazine, but not that much. Uh, I got, I published an art piece and I think that's it. Okay, cool. Um, and then your book reviews, how did you decide that you wanted to write book reviews for the website and what is it like to write them and to have them posted? I don't know, I just really like, I read a lot of books then, and I saw a couple of the blogs, but I thought book reviews were just for me, so I read a lot of books then, and so I, and I had back in, I was in like fifth grade then, we had these like little, um, what, like one hour meetings where we have to read a book or so in our class, and that's, that gave me the inspiration to make my first book reviews. Cool. So, what types of books do you like to review? I don't know, basically anything, realistic fiction, fantasy, uh, basically anything. Cool, yeah, and then, um, wait, oh yeah, so we'll talk about your book later on, your book Three Days Till EOC, but first, so you did participate in some of the writing workshops this spring, correct? Yeah. Um, what was your favorite thing about those writing workshops? Um, I don't really know. I, I liked uh, it a lot. I liked how we, we just had certain prompts and we could just write whatever we want. It's, uh, it's really hard for me to come across that sort of stuff. And I liked how I could be with kids my age. And so it was really fun. The only reason I kind of stopped participating was because I was really busy with other stuff. Understandable. Yeah. And then you also came to book club a few times, right? Yeah. What do you think your favorite part about book club was? I don't know. I mean, I liked reading the books and how we could just give uh, our uh, opinion about them because I'm like a really tough critic. And so I like like trying to give my opinion. And that's I, and I do that a lot. I do that with like movies and books and video games. And I like go to different clubs and talk about them, not just Stone Soup. Cool. Yeah. Um, do you have any particular books or authors who have inspired your writing, do you think? Well, I mean, I used to read a lot of fantasy books. I mean, I liked Harry Potter a lot. I liked Lord of the Rings. And uh, I liked uh, this author. He, he's the one who wrote Holes. That was my first book mm -hmm. review. I forgot. It's really hard to say his name. Uh, Lewis Satcher. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's how you spell his name. But uh, he was like, he was like one of my favorite authors and like, he was the really big inspiration for me to write book reviews because I liked reading his books a lot. They were like, they were my kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. So, um, now I guess we'll start talking about your novella, Three Days Till EOC, which as we said earlier, won first place in the Stone Soup Annual Book Contest last year. Again, congratulations. Um, so what inspired you to submit to the contest? What inspired you to write Three Days Till EOC? Well, uh, I knew I had to come up with an idea from scratch if I wanted to enter in the book contest. So at first I had this like sci-fi end of the world concept in my head and I was thinking I could write 
uh, a story about like a disease that's like killing everybody around the world, which is kind of ironic with, because of what's happening right now. But uh, this was in the summer of 2019. But uh, after I real uh, after a while, uh, when I came up with the idea, I realized like it was too simple and just kind of uninteresting. So I made it climate focused, but I still kept the kind of end of the world concept in mind. And I wanted to make it about climate change because I knew it was happening in real life. And I wanted to point out the issue in an entertaining uh, way that was also thrilling and scary. But I still want to add some sci-fi elements in it, in it. So I did that as well. Cool. So what was it like to write a book? Was this the first book you've written or were you kind of used to writing long form like this? Oh, this was like the first big book I wrote. And it was like, it was painful and hard. Like it took uh, a lot of drafts and a lot of rewriting and revising. Uh, the whole idea of like the human network, uh, pen, mm -hmm. so you've read the book, so I think you know yeah. what that is. And the time machine, well, that takes uh, Graham and his friends back and forth. Like those things were not there at all in the first draft. But after I read the first draft, I had to keep on revising it to make it more interesting and different from other climate change books. And also, I also made it about family and legacy because I felt the whole issue about climate change is that we have to act now because our future, our legacy will be impacted if we don't. I thought this was a really unique way of looking at the issue. Uh, I like doing things out, out of the box, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it was really difficult to write. But if a writer continues writing, knowing that he'll have to edit and revise later, he or she is ready for anything. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, so more specifically, what do you think your writing process was like? You said you've done a lot. You did a lot of revisions on EOC. Did you plan out a lot first or just kind of go in and start writing and see where it took? Oh, I, well, I planned out a lot because like the whole story, like it took a long time to finally get, like even the basic idea took a while to get, and I had to, I didn't start writing until I had like the whole plan thought out. So. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, how did it feel when you found it out that you'd won? <laughs> I don't know. Like I was just shocked. Like I didn't expect it to happen. I was just, I just put it in the contest and I thought, okay, this seems like my, like my best draft. I did not expect to win. Like I forgot about it. It took a while. So I completely forgot about it. And then when it came, I was just really happy. That's cool. Yeah. Was there anyone in your life who inspired you along the way in terms of writing EOC? Uh, probably my family. I think that's the biggest thing because I definitely discussed a lot of the ideas with my family because of the summer we were in India. So like I was just with my family. I could, I wasn't with anybody else. So I discussed my, my ideas with my mom and dad a lot. So that was like the big thing. I think like without them, I probably wouldn't have done all some of the ideas like the pen stuff without them. So that was like the big, that was the big people that helped me out. Cool. Yeah. And did you submit again this year? I'm not sure. Uh, no. Okay. Cool. So, um, I think we, I, you might've already answered this, but what inspired you to make Three Days Till EOC a dystopian book? I mean, also a climate change book, but more specifically like just in the dystopian genre. Uh, well, like I said, I mean, I, climate change, uh, was happening in real life and I wanted to point that out but like in a different way not just like not just like a non-fiction book kind of in a thrilling sci-fi way because that's like my favorite kind of genre so I, I only did climate change because I thought that because it's happening in real life I wanted to point that out to people but in a fun kind of way <laughs> definitely yeah and so you're saying it was kind of dystopian genre because that's what you like to read and so that's what you wanted to write Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm even taking a dystopian class right now. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so what, so your main character, Graham, what inspired you to create him the way he was, as opposed to some, you know, cliched, like, sauntering hero with, like, big buff, whatever, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't really know. I mean, I like a lot of, I like vulnerable characters, not just characters who are really, really powerful. And so I wanted to create like a regular human because I feel he was very relatable, not just a person with like superpowers and stuff. Cool. But I also wanted to make him very hopeful and happy. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, 
the note that Graham has, classmate, and the classmate left this note, this thank you note, like anonymously in Graham's college dorm. What do you, what does that note symbolize to you? What does it symbolize in the book? Um, well, the inspiration for it, or like how it all began was like, uh, um, in third grade, uh, somebody, I think it was the teacher, I don't know, gave out like anonymous little thank you notes to everybody. Uh, and we don't know, and we didn't know who it was. So I wanted to do like the same thing because it made everybody really happy. And so I just wanted to put that in there because I felt like that would be very uh, interesting and different. Yeah, I think it's always really cool when we draw on inspirations from real life. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, do you relate to anyone in the book or is anyone in the book inspired by someone in your life? Well, not particularly, like, for the most part, I just had to come up with it from scratch. But like I said, I really wanted to make like vulnerable characters like humans, not just like Supermans or anything like that. Cool, yeah. And then again, you might've already answered this, but how did you decide to introduce time travel and teleportation into your novel? And how did you decide what roles that they would play? Well, I, uh, like, I really like sci-fi. And I really wanted to add those in like really badly. That's why like it would it would have been easier to write the story if it didn't have those elements, but I really wanted to put those elements in there somehow. And that was that was what took a lot of revising. All of mostly all of the sci-fi elements and all of the complicated stuff. That's what took a lot of uh, work. And I but I really wanted to put that in the book because that's like my favorite kind of thing to do: time travel, teleportation. And this was like the first. A uh, big book I wrote that had stuff like this in it. Yeah. So, was there originally not time travel in the first draft, or is there still time travel? Because I'm just curious about how it evolved over your different um, re revisions and drafts. Well, uh, in the first draft, like I don't know, in the first draft, like the basic story was the same, uh, but none of the time travel and pen. Uh, didn't ex it didn't exist. I, I didn't I didn't think of putting that in there. But after I saw the first draft, I thought it was kind of uh, boring and static. So I wanted to add some of that stuff in there. Okay. So no, in the first draft, it didn't exist. So how did they stop EOC in the first draft? I'm curious. Wait, what did you say? I couldn't hear you. Um, how did they stop EOC in the first draft? Because it seems like pen and time travel is pretty um, center or important. Well, I mean, in the first draft, that was like the, the most difficult part. And like in the first draft, I said, uh, we still had the anonymous kind of gift uh, gift kind of things, like the little writing notes. And But like mm -hmm. all, but it the story didn't flow really well during that. So, so the basic idea of stopping EOC was the same as it was the final draft, but like it didn't flow very well. Like it didn't make a lot of sense in some parts. So that was the, that was the basic uh, thing that I had to, revise a lot. Okay, cool. Um, so I think you've already said this. Um, what message did you want to convey by writing your book? Well, I wanted to convey a lot of different messages, but mostly about family and uh, legacy because it will, we, we will hurt the future if we don't act now. That was like the big message I wanted to put out and like how we can help uh, uh, the future to be a better place. Cool, yeah. And so in the book, there are two, I guess, maybe more secondary characters, but still important, Shelley and Jackson. What role do you think that they had or how did, what role did you design for them in your book? Well, what do you mean? Like the role, like? I don't know, so role. I mean, like they helped Graham along the way but was there any other reason that they were there in the book? I'm just curious as to how you decided to bring them into the story as opposed to having Graham do everything by himself. Well, I wanted teamwork also to be a big message because I didn't, because I knew like Graham can't do everything and I wanted to show that when he like failed the first time. So I wanted to show how teamwork uh, can help out how Graham can't just be like the person who always saves the day. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, who is your favorite character? And also, what do you think is your favorite part in EOC? 
or in three days till EFC. Well, I have my favorite character is the main character, Graham, because like he's the most interesting character. He's very hopeful. And I just like him in general. Uh, I also like Jackson a lot because he's kind of just like the side character. And I, and I love, and he, I think he's a really interesting side character. I, uh, it's been a while since I've read the book, but I think my favorite part is uh, probably the beginning where they're in the, uh, the bar and, and how everybody knows that like Mars, that they can go and travel to Mars and how everybody is really happy except him. And that's, that's was basically the start of his adventure. So that was like the most interesting, the mo that was the most fun part for me to make. Nice, yeah. Did you always know that they would go, that like everyone would want to evacuate to Mars? Well, so, well in the first draft, I mean, the whole, like, like I said, the bar still existed, but like the whole Mars thing, I thought I'd put that in later or do something different about that. But after, but I wanted to put in the bar because I thought, okay, that's like the, the best part. And that, that would be like the twist. Like everything is normal. Everybody's thinking that they're going to die until they realize that they're all saved. And that's when, I, then that's when Graham's adventure began. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, this is kind of a random question, but there, was there any particular reason for the names that you used for your characters or is it just kind of like whatever you thought of? I don't know. I'm not very good on names for characters. I just came up with the most random names ever. Oh, the, the Graham character name, uh, that's been in my head for a long time. So I just thought, hey, I can just use that kind, I can just use that name. But it's not that difficult for me to come up with names. I don't need like a, like what other people use, like those name generators or whatever. See, that's like, me. I'm, I'm one of those people. <laughs> Yeah, I just come up with random names and I think, hey, that sounds good. Cool, yeah. Did you find that you grew closer to the characters as you got further into writing Three Days Till EOC? Yeah, well, when in the first drafts or when the, the first time, I was just like, it was really difficult to write the book. So the whole first draft and the whole process, it was just so painful, it was so difficult that I didn't really care about the characters, but I started to revise and I started to really like the characters and get more intrigued with them. But the first time I was just so frustrated because coming up with the whole idea was so uh, uh, difficult. But as I continued revising it and making it better, I started to really connect with the characters. Do you, do you think it was a worthwhile thing to do to write the book? Well, yeah, definitely, because I mean, uh, I was really satisfied in the end. Like I had, uh, I was really, really happy in the end. And even if I didn't win, I would just still felt really happy that I created like my own, my own book. Cool. Yeah. What did it feel like to finish? How did you know that you were done with writing the book? Did it feel like you were done with it or was it just kind of like, I guess I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Uh, no, I felt I felt really happy, but like, yeah, I I finished the book like almost at the end of the 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 uh, due date when all the books had to be submitted, and I remember having like I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I remember we had like an extended week to finish the book, and that really really helped me because I was like I was still stuck on some problems, but the extended week like I I got a lot of stuff done, so I was really worried that like I wouldn't be able to finish the book and get everything in the best shape as, as possible. But with the extended week, uh, I think I did the best draft I could. Yeah. Did you have any doubts about submitting it when you did submit it? No, not really. I mean, like I said, it took a while. I just thought I could submit it. And I was just really happy that I finished the book, but it took so long, I kind of forgot it. <laughs> and then when it came back, I was just really, really happy. I didn't know what to expect. That's great, that's great. <laughs> um. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview, Avi. And of course, oh. and for like the fourth time, um, congratulations on your book.